Now, there's less than 48 hours to go before the polls close in the Labour leadership race. The polls suggest Jeremy Corbyn is on course for another victory, but many are asking whether the party can reunite. Some Labour MPs who've been critical of Mr Corbyn are fearful that they could be deselected by local party members loyal to the Labour leader. Here's what the General Secretary of the Unite Union, Len McCluskey, a supporter of Mr Corbyn, told the BBC's John Pienaar for a Panorama programme scheduled to air later this evening. Some of the MPs have behaved absolutely despicably and disgracefully and they've not shown any respect whatsoever to, uh, to the leader. They should be held to account. So those vocal dissidents who do not show the sort of respect to the leader that you describe when it comes to deselection, they would simply be asking for it, you say? I think they would. I think anybody who kind of behaves in a way that is totally disrespectful and outwit the, the culture of the Labour Party is basically asking uh, to be held to account. McCluskey there. Well, with me now is Richard Angel, the Director of Progress, Labour's centrist pressure group, and Barbara Natumi from the campaign group Momentum, which grew out of Jeremy Corbyn's first leadership campaign. Welcome to both of you. Richard Angel, first of all, let's pick up on what Len McCluskey said. Isn't he right that Labour MPs who are openly critical of Jeremy Corbyn's leadership are asking to be held to account by their local party membership? Lynn McCluskey wasn't particularly supportive of some of the previous Labour, Labour leadership were there and Jeremy Corbyn spoke truth to power when he was a backbencher in the Labour Party. This has got to be a broad church party and we've got to all be able to have different ideas. Uh, as long as we're constructive in those, that must be important going forward. You know, people have tried to serve on the front bench but found time and time again frustrated by doing it, which is what led to the situation that happened when we left the EU. Um, Going around threatening to deselect MPs is not fair or right. Right. I mean, isn't it the case, Barbara, that you would have a sort of monoculture within the Labour Party if everybody thought the same way? And it is true to say that Jeremy Corbyn didn't support any of the recent Labour leaders, but there were no calls for him to be deselected. Um, momentum as an organisation is not calling for any MPs to be That wasn't my question, but do you, However, uh, do you understand that if you're not in agreement with the leader, or you agree that if you're not in agreement with the leader, that you should still have a place oh, as no, an MP? Oh no, of course, you should still have a place right. in the party. So let me ask you wrong. Obviously being like disruptive and destructive purposefully, including when a time where the Labour should have actually been, you know, putting forward this plan and opposing the Tories, most recently after the referendum, I think then some of us feel some kind of way about it because it's like, well, we could be actually pushing back the Tories instead of having this internal bitter fight where you had people resigning every hour which must have been like a bit embarrassing and shocking for loads of the new members that joined the Labour Party that Labour MPs would think to even do anything like that. So you think they should be held to account? I think they should be held to account whatever form that comes in. I think that the local members and the people that voted for them in the constituency should be able to do that. I am personally, all momentum is not calling for anyone to be deselected. Right. What do you say to that? That actually there is a big difference between being critical of a leader and actually having mass resignations some people thought it was orchestrated and that now even at this stage there are those saying Jeremy Corbyn should go well if you look at what happened straight after we left the EU Jeremy Corbyn said we should trigger article 50 straight away that's many of Len McCloskey's members jobs that would go down the Swanee if we didn't have some of the trade deals we needed with the EU it's not unreasonable for you to raise these important issues and believe that somebody who calls a big issue like that so wrong isn't able to do the job ahead of them right in terms of the disagreements where Labour is now, according to Neil Kinnock, former leader, he says he'll never see a Labour government again in his lifetime. What do you say to him? I completely disagree. Hundreds of thousands of people have joined the Labour Party. We're all going to go door knocking come election. We're all organising our communities. We're speaking to people. We're trying to build the broadhead. We're trying to speak to the current situation that people live in. People having zero hours contract, don't have the stability of work, you know, um, nurseries for children are being cut. Those are the things that we're speaking to people in our communities about and those are the things that are going to win us into government. Even okay. though the polls are disastrous? The polls are disastrous because we've had the summer that we've had. I think that that's inevitable. Also, the polls have called it wrong several times, so I think that we shouldn't 100% rely on the polls. The polls were biased in Labour's favour. That's the worry, is actually the situation could be worse than how they are now. And that Jeremy Corbyn wasn't ahead before the Brexit referendum happened. There is a deep problem that we have and the problem is, is what are momentum waiting for? You know, the two t 
programs that are coming out later show that behind the scenes they're not the nice people they send on the telly that are making decisions it's many others and they are prioritizing deselecting Labour MPs it seems rather than door knocking and winning an election I, that's completely I think untrue an election very likely momentum, within the next year momentum is a democratic organization for momentum but street stalls for Labour right but is momentum it untrue? activists were the loads of activists that went out to campaign for Sadiq Khan including me and three of my friends so I don't there is no one priority is over the other. Actually, we can do both in the same way that you have saving labour. I don't know who runs saving labour. I don't know who the elected officers are. You know, with momentum, we're a democratic organisation. We want the Labour Party to be democratic. We want people, ordinary members, to have a say as opposed to MPs or even a leader having a complete veto over the direction of the party. People are sick and tired of Labour being austerity light. We want better and we deserve better. The public out there want an alternative to the government that is able to replace it, not just a spokesperson in Parliament that's able to We are able it. to replace let, let it. Let Richard uh, finish his point and then I'll come back to you, Barbara. But we've got to build a bigger vision and it cannot be about control of the Labour Party. It's got to be about winning over the community that left us. And that means campaigning all year round. It doesn't mean street stalls for momentum in between elections and only going out for Sadiq Khan when the, when the, when the actual vote comes round. It means doing that all the time. And that's the kind of movement we need to build. Right. Are all the new members, though, Barbara, that you've talked about, and you know, Jeremy Corbyn said it's a great thing that obviously the Labour Party is much bigger and now better off than it was before. Are they loyal to Labour values? Because some of the services have shown that they're more to Mr. loyal to Mr Corbyn himself than they are to the party brand, that they have come from the Green Party or Socialist Workers party or perhaps the communist party maybe smaller numbers to, from those parties but that they're not actually loyal to labor Labour's founding policy is that it's this ultimate a socialist democratic party and I think that that's what most people are loyal to. However, there's been a difference in how that has been interpreted with the different leadership we've had over the years. So I 100% say that all these new members are loyal to Labour because what Labour stands for and what the leader stands for are things that are marrying each other as opposed to things that are opposite ends or as opposed to things that are trying to be like the Tories and not actually Labour values. But the leadership of Momentum turns a blind eye when the Alliance of Workers' Liberty are actively organising within Momentum and therefore the Labour Party. There's a kind of Russian dull politics where somebody from Ada World turns up to a Momentum group that controls the left group in their local party that then gets to decide who the delegate is to Labour Party conference. Right. That's not tolerable. Let me um, ask you, do you think peace is going to break out in the Le Labour Party? It's really silly. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of silliness going on here. You know, the, the, this, I think everything you're talking about is in the dispatches program, I believe. Um, now, the AWL, the, 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 idea that, the, the idea that that representative, it, she's some kind of dangerous trot, is ridiculous. She's, she, you know, she, anybody would recognise her from an 80s Labour Party, any meeting you'd have ever been to in 1984. There's, there's no kind of dangerous subfaction. There are people who believe things more trenchantly than other people. I don't think momentum is. The momentum, you know, the guy they've got on the dispatchers program, apparently from Momentum, talking about deselections, isn't, isn't actually a member of Momentum. But does this mean that so they can reunite? I mean, the point is, if Jeremy Corbyn is, 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 is holding out an olive branch, um, and you've got a Labour MP like Peter Carl saying, Jeremy is the first person I've come across who uses an olive branch as a weapon to beat people with, because he says he's had so much abuse from within his Labour Party locally, does peace have a chance within Labour? I think peace has a chance if everybody just takes the temperature down a little bit. It's Are they going to do it's that? It's completely ridiculous. You know, you can't look at an army of activists and write them all off as revolutionaries and say, I'm not interested in you. You've got to be a bit more curious and open about what who momentum actually are and what they want to do and, and it's really important is if, if you're a kind of party that worries so much about whether a green is really true labor that you can't accept their membership you have to ask what your values actually are just briefly Bob before we let you go Jeremy Corman acknowledged at the weekend that he had discussed the futures of Tom Watson the deputy leader and Ian McNichol the general secretary at a recent meeting do you think they should stay in their positions those two I think that loads of people like myself and my friends will feel that people that have been told that they can't vote or can't be members of the Labour Party because they might have tweeted or anything else and those decisions have been made from the likes of Ian McNichol. But should they I stay in their position? I think, I think, it, causes, I think it causes a question. I don't, disrespect to, I don't disrespect Tom Watson's money. I'm not saying that he should go. I think that there are issues around the way that people have been treated that really needs to be looked at. And if people can't act mm. fairly, and I think that that's something that we need to have a discussion about, about whether they are there to serve the party or they're there to say, well, I, this person right. has tweeted about the Greens, so they can't, they can't possibly have Labour values. And I think that that's wrong. Thank you, both of you.